Stop to... putting mayonnaise on your consoles. Yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Bex from Tristabytes and I'm here with Ali, who is the retro hunter, the definitive retro hunter, who owns this awesome shop. The Retro Hunter is an awesome independent retro game and toy shop tucked away on the edge of South End on Sea. The modest sized shop is packed to the rafters with all sorts of gaming gems, from consoles and peripherals to titles for Nintendo 64, Game Boy, Master System, Mega Drive, SNES, PlayStation, Xbox, NES, GameCube, and even some Commodore and Spectrum cassettes. We spotted some awesome hardware pickups, including Game and Watch handhelds, licensed LCD games, special edition Game Boys, Wonder Swan and Atari Lynx, and add ons like the Mega. CD and the 32X. Plus there was an impressive selection of board games, geek plushies and 80s and 90s toys, including some of my favourites, He-Man, Thundercats, Biker Mice from Mars and Robocop. I caught up with Ali to find out more. So basically you had far too much stuff in your house and either had to sell it or open a museum? Basically yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's probably quite a few people that can open shops with the size of collections they have. But that does seem to be the way a lot of people get into this thing. I don't think that there's any people running retro gaming shops that aren't avid collectors themselves. And it really shows in kind of like, you know, the stock you have. I, th I think that's what makes, uh, you know, independent retro shops or independent game shops different is that we've, we've all been collectors or are collectors. And they know coming to a place like this that that's what they're going to find. They're going to, they, you know, they've got to guarantee that, you know, it's going to be work working. It's going to be tested. It's mm. going to be clean. It's the kind of condition that you want to, you know, purchase something in. Yeah, and anyone who brings their kind of collections into you because they perhaps have run out of rooms in their house and needs to find new loving homes for it. No, you will usher them towards other people who will take care of them and give them a nice place to live and pet them. It's it's amazing how many people do come in with that exact philosophy. It's, it's like, you know, I, I've been following you for a while. I've seen you at shows. Uh, I know that you know you're kind of fair on prices. I know that you're going to find the right homes for my bits because you know mm. people get very precious over their collection. You yeah, know. But they're little pieces of gaming history. These things, they're some of them are extremely rare items that you know either need to be in a collection or or as we say, in a, in a museum or somewhere they're going to be taken care of. And you're kind of rescuing things from people's attics a lot as well, really, aren't you? I do get a lot of things coming in from attics, yes. So. I've seen him doing a lot of dusting. <laughs> I, 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 probably, I probably hold up, you know, the local Sainsbury's. I think we're the only person that buys wet wipes from them, antibacterial wet wipes. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I, the two things I need in the shop, antibacterial wet wipes and, and kitchen towels. For, for drying so off basically objects. what we should get you is a French maid's <laughs> outfit because you are effectively yes. a cleaner as well as a curator and I, a shop owner. Yes, people think it's quite glamorous having a retro game shop. They're like, oh, I wish I could do this. It's sit down and play games all day. It's like, I don't get time to play games. He's too busy I'm cleaning. in his French maid's outfit I, polishing them. Yeah, I'm cleaning. Uh, I'm, I'm cleaning again. I'm testing. I'm putting the game in, making sure it works, playing five minutes of it taking it out and repeating the process over and over again. You know, yeah. It's not quite as glamorous as everyone thinks it is. <laughs> but still, pretty damn awesome. <laughs> oh, don't get me wrong. Yes, hell yes. I love it on a daily basis. I love... Uh, the thing that I loved the most when I first started trading at shows and stuff, it was seeing the reaction within the individual when they finally get that mm. game. You know, they're reunited with that game they've been chasing for ages in the condition they've been looking for it. Or that kind of spark in the eye where they see something they'd forgotten even existed until seeing it again. They're like, oh my God, I remember this. I had this as a kid. Yes. And that's what kind of gives me my, my job satisfaction on a daily basis. You know, it's seeing that reaction in someone. It's, 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 like, it's my like kind of doing a job well done, pat on the back mm. kind of thing. I've been able to find that, that item and get it for them and ready for them. And it's the reaction in them taking that item again that kind of makes me go home with a smile on my face at the end of the day. Yeah, it is basically reuniting people with nostalgia and memories of their childhood because these games were so important to us. I mean, they might cause a lot of fights between siblings, but when they weren't causing punch-ups, they were definitely bringing us so much joy and forming such strong memories. And you've got such a range of stuff here as well. Um, you've even got arcade cabinet taking up quite a lot of space and being pretty awesome. I'm a bit partial to an arcade cabinet. <laughs> I hadn't noticed. <laughs> I can't resist them. You know, funnily enough, Miss Pac-Man was a trading, believe it or not. Someone messaged the, the page and said... They just oh, turned up with it on their shoulder they, and went, would you like one of these? They, I think they did it on a Monday, and I'm generally... Monday's my only day off. That's the only day I'm closed. They messaged me on a Monday and said, are you open to us? I said, I'm afraid not. I said, I was going to want to trade in the Miss Pac-Man cabinet. I was like, I'll be there in 60 seconds. <laughs> literally. <laughs> yeah, literally. 
literally he just jumped out the window he forgot to put any clothes on just dived through the door <laughs> had to go back had to calm it down with the police and then pac-man was yours and miss pac-man was born i mean she was quite offended by you turning up naked to buy but other than that <laughs> she's gotten used to me now <laughs> <laughs> there'll be a divorce in the future <laughs> I've seen a lot of things you get go up on your social media, so that the Retro Hunter, like Instagram, for example, things seem to appear, and then immediately people are kind of saying, mine, and they might not even make it onto the shop. A lot of the time they don't make it to the pictures. Okay. <laughs> if stuff's come in, uh, and I'm li- I haven't even got to the point of taking a picture yet, uh, then it can go before, you know, stuff, I, I have stuff come in and go out that doesn't even make it to the pictures, so it all depends on timing, you know. Mm. Uh, stuff is does go quickly, which is good. Which is good. And it's also because you have that community feel within within the retro gaming community. It's just people know what everyone else is looking out for. They're kind of like, if someone sees that you have something someone else wants, people kind of share that information. And you've got all your regulars who are going to kind of poke you occasionally and say, have you got this? Have you got that? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is a great community. Does People do look out for each other. And, you know, if they know someone else is looking for an item, they will tag them on it on Facebook or on Twitter or wherever it is. Or, you know, I, I get calls daily asking me if I've got certain games etc etc and it's great to see that kind of mix of the online social media stuff combined with having a physical shop here where people can come in and have a look around and see the quality of the items you've got and and you were saying maybe at some point in future you wanted to put a little gaming zone in the back that, that that's that's the plan that there's another secret plan as well which Ooh. may be revealed at some point in a, a few months but a few that's months. a little way from being resolved but there may be a yeah something in so, the pipeline. There's something in the pipeline planned, but we're not there yet. So you didn't hear it here first. I tried. But there may <laughs> be more secret things coming up for the Retro Hunter. And as well as running the shop, I mean, you started off with doing the, the gaming events. Yes, started trading. My first ever show was Play Margate. I think 2015 now, I think it is. Uh, that was my first ever one. And yeah, I started off doing the odd shows while I was still working full time in London. Uh, eventually took the plunge by complete chance this place became available which is extremely local to where I live and it literally all... 60 seconds I wasn't lying about the diving out the window yeah, thing yeah actually it's not quite out the window so across yeah. the right <laughs> so you need a, a zip line <laughs> that'd be awesome that would be awesome or, so or an underground tunnel yeah I mean I, I or, well both or both because the zip line kind of only goes one way going back up the zip line would probably be True. somewhat more arduous true so a tunnel to go back and a zip line to get in the next time someone brings in an archive cabinet that you really shouldn't buy because it's too big i'm liking that yeah i might, yeah. Have, to, might have to look into so that. You, you heard that here first there will now be a zip line <laughs> so that when he's running 10 minutes late and you're putting angry notes through the door you can get him to, to zip line over <laughs> and then the retro hunter will be open you might need to put some kind of large cat flap in the door to to yeah. kind of barrel roll through yeah, and that, that would work that would work. It's complete. I can't think of anything that's not sensible about this plan. <laughs> <laughs> Cost. Cost. <laughs> ah. that, might be, that might be an issue. Realism. And I'm talking about zip lines coming through the front door of your shop and you're talking about realistic things like cost. <laughs> I think you've slightly missed the point there. Yeah. <laughs> They're doing some work over there at the moment, so maybe I'll get them to do, 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 do a tunnel. Yeah, just it? raise a crane up. It's a big and... enough drill, isn't it? Yeah. Everything, everything's doable. Everything's doable. <laughs> I've seen Minecraft, you can make anything. It's true. true. So of the things you've got here at the moment, do you have a favourite thing? Are the things that you sometimes are supposed to sell and just keep? Today, yes. (laughs) Today. Today, Today's the first time uh, a few things have come in that I I knew as soon as I saw them that they're not not going out into the shop. That was some vintage Star Wars carded figures. Yeah. So, yeah, don't exactly come in every day. It's a real sweet spot of mine, uh, all the vintage Star Wars stuff. So, yeah, I, as soon as I saw them, I thought, yeah, they're not going out. I'm keeping those. Is that sort of slight dent in the uh, profits of running a shop like this because you basically want to keep everything? Uh, I'm really strict these days. It's kind of funny. When when I worked full-time in London I was and I was a hardcore collecting for everything, I was always trying to procrastinate away from what I was supposed to be doing to on eBay looking for stuff, you know, mm. because I wasn't doing what I loved. Now I kind of do what I loved and I'm surrounded by it all day. Yeah. I don't feel the need to be surrounded by it at home. Mm. So I, the, the only things I really collect these days are arcade cabinets. 
the, the biggest, most cumbersome, expensive, difficult to collect thing. You've just settled on that one. You could have settled on like Game Boy games that you could have fitted into like a nice neat box. But no, you're like, I'm going to stop collecting all of these things. It's taking up far too much space and time. I'll stick with arcade cabinets. Yes. No because that won't it. take up too much room There's in no your house. To it. It's just That's good. I didn't, I didn't expect logic, I have to say. I've met you before. <laughs> You get to reunite people with all of their childhood games, but probably a much better nick than they kept them when they were kids themselves. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I'm, I'm waiting for something to come in one day and, and there'll be like an initial on it or something, especially when I'm picking things up locally and mm -hmm. people are coming in from local, local areas. I'm waiting for someone to come in one day and go, oh my God, that was my game. That was my that. actual game. That's my name on that. I'm waiting for that kind of that reunion yeah. to happen. It's not happened yet, but it's still a possibility. Maybe you should just start adding people's initials to games. <laughs> That's a big no-no in the, in the collector's world. I, I spend a lot of time kind of removing things on there that shouldn't be on there. Yeah, I saw a lot of the ones at the back with stickers on and things, and I thought, ah, that's going to take him a while with his... Stickers, <laughs> yes. People, collectors don't like stickers. I, I do have some, some great stuff that is brilliant at removing stickers, though. So for me, stickers aren't really a problem, and I do kind of remove them in most cases without any damage whatsoever but he's not going to tell you how because it's a trade secret i can tell you how people don't listen though <laughs> I've, I've seen lots of different people people have it's, it's insane if you if you look on some of the, the collectors groups etc people will tell you to use lighter fluid on stickers they'll tell you to use mayonnaise mayonnaise yep it's a thing in case the stickers are edible yeah uh, mayonnaise, just need a bit uh, of sauce. hair dryers Use hair dryers to 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 so dry lighter out fluid the, the glue. mayonnaise and hair dryers and on I your precious say, electronic you know equipment. What I say is just buy a can of something called Label Clean and you spray it on and you leave it for five minutes. You come back and it just falls off with no damage. But people don't listen. They use lighter fluid and mayonnaise. There you go. I've top tried, top tips from the Retro the Hunter. Stop the putting mayonnaise on your consoles. Yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've learned something today. <laughs> Extremely. It wasn't what I expected to learn from this video, but I have learned something <laughs> extremely valuable. So Good. thank you for that. Good. And thank you for talking to me. And if you don't already follow The Retro Hunter on Instagram and uh, other Twitter, places, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter and Facebook. There you go. You need to be following The Retro Hunter because they have amazing stock here. And obviously this guy, apart from telling people not to put mayonnaise on consoles, knows his stuff and can get you some awesome retro gaming stuff. And if you're down in South End, then this is definitely a place to check out. So thank you for talking to me. It's been absolutely great fun. Thanks and I'm going to go and look around at all the games. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> thank you.